Fingers. All right, how's everybody doing? It's Ryan here with the Louisiana Academy of Performing Arts with you once again for another SQ tutorial. And uh, today we're going to talk about how to set up your Allen & Heath SQ mixer with an external recorder like the Tascam DA6400, which we have in the studio here. So the DA6400 is a 64-track standalone digital recorder. And you can get it with either a Dante, um, an AES EBU, or MADI card. Okay, so it doesn't come with a card, but you get to pick the type of interface that you want to have. We went with the Dante, um, since everything we have is Dante enabled, and that makes things really easy for routing. And so first we'll start with Dante controller. And again, if you're new to Dante, um, this is kind of where you start. You need to make sure that you have your signals routing to and from the devices. So at the top here, we have the outputs and then receivers are down on the side here. So you can think transmitter, receiver. So we have our DA6400 is um, receiving all the inputs from the SQ5 here. And that's just one-to-one -one routing. And then when we want to play back something from the um, 6400, Right now, I mean, you can route all these channels, but right now we're just routing 5 and 6 back to channel 17 and 18 into the SQ5. Okay, so that's pretty simple there. So now we can take a look at the I.O. patch page and see how everything is getting to where it needs to go. So today is very simple. I have a microphone, and it's the one I'm talking to you with right now. It is locally plugged into channel 16 of the SQ, and um, that's really all you need to know there. Um, and then as far as how we're getting it to the recorder, we're getting it there a few different ways. So not only do I record the individual outputs directly, but we also have the overall mix that gets recorded. And I can record the main mix, I can record an aux mix, you know, I have 64 channels to do what I need. Right now I have all of these output sockets um, assigned to channel 5 and 6, or aux 5 and 6. They're going to a few different places and recorders for redundancy. So that's helpful. And then let's look at the tie line. So I like to use the tie lines for the um, direct individual channel outputs because it's you know, if you have the mute button on, for example, accidentally on the board, it doesn't matter. It, the signal comes right in, it hits the preamp, and then it goes directly out to the recorder. So that is very helpful. Now you do have the um, IP direct outputs too. I haven't really tested those, but I think you have more available points to take the signal from, um, you know, with EQ and compression, all that kind of stuff tie lines is just pretty much direct out. Let's take a look at my local microphone. The way I try to think of this page is I have my points of origin here on the left and then I have my destination up here to the output sockets. So origin over to where I want it to go. Output sockets. Because you can get lost in this page folks. It's you know I don't know if you're like me but it does get a little confusing sometimes. Um, so I've patched um, my microphone to Dante channel 17. The reason for that is I keep um, channels 1 through 16 open for my mix outputs. I don't really need that many channels, but I just tend to think in blocks of 16. I guess I could think in blocks of 8 if I wanted, but I don't know. That's just how it is. So channel 17 starts my individual channels on the DA6400. Okay, and then if I need more channels um, from my DT168, I have them assigned on Dante starting with channel 18, and those go on and on like that. And so as you can see, we are recording our overall mix, which is on channels 5 and 6, as well as our individual microphone on channel 17. And we're also recording a few other channels that we really don't need to be. I just forgot to turn them off. Also, a really neat function with this uh, recorder is the um, virtual network display that you can see up here. 
There's a little application that you can download from realvnc.com, and this hooks right up to that so you can, um, you know, control things from your computer instead of twisting the little knob down here. I'm going to twist the little knob down here today because I haven't mastered all the commands yet. So now we'll go ahead and explore the menu for the DA6400 and just learn some of the basic functions that you'll need to get started. So you'll hit the menu button and that brings you to page one here. Um, the first thing you'll want to definitely do is set the clock master and you want to set that to whatever card slot you have selected. So my Dante card is in slot one and that is the source of my clock. Uh, let's take a look here at um, the record function now. So let's go there and I have the mode set to individual channels. Um, if you want to use all 64 channels every time you record, you can select the all mode. Um, I don't find that necessary though. You can click the forward and back arrows to get to the individual channels to arm them. So if you want to arm them, we can't really do that right now because we're recording. So see, that's what happens if you try. Um, but normally it'll turn the little red dot to just a gray dot if you hit the, um, there's a little knob here, the selector knob. A much easier way to arm tracks is via the iPad app, which is a free app. And it's you just touch where you want to record and yeah, much nicer. So highly recommend that. And then you have a choice for file names, how you want your file name structure to to go. I have just a folder name set right now. Another nice feature is the track names feature. So you're able to actually name each channel and you know that way when your files come out it's a little bit easier to know which is which. So as you can see I have just one through six for um, my mix outputs. And then like I said 17 is when I start all of our individual um, instrument channels. Now we're going to take a look at um, the FTP server. So all you have to do is um, type in your IP address. Um, once you've connected it to your network, the username DA-6400 and the default password, which I actually don't remember. Um, <laughs> but it's in the manual. Um, and then this is where all your files get stored. You can make new folders, of course. I haven't done that yet. But you can kind of see, so we have, you know, the track names, time, and date. The time, to be honest with you, is a little strange. I've set my clock correctly, you know, just the time clock. Um, however, when I record my files, that part is still, the time is still off. And I haven't figured that out yet. If anybody knows who happens to be watching this, that would be something helpful to me. So you have here all the individual files. Something that I would like, uh, maybe in a future update, would be the ability to link two channels together to make a stereo file. For example, with the mixes, um, you know, if I could just have a finished left and right stereo mix, um, instead of having to do that myself, that would save some time. Just a thought for you there, um, Tascam. That would be cool. And... I think that is pretty much everything I wanted to show you. Um, so I don't even bother taking the hard drive out. It's an SSD. You could, you know, dock it to your computer. It's pretty hard to see, but there's actually on the drive itself, there's actually a USB port. So you could connect your computer to the drive that way. Don't have to take it out. Um, but personally, it's just super quick to go to this IP address and download the file. And so those are the basic features that I wanted to point out um, today to get you started. If you are looking for a large number of tracks to get recorded in a single rack space, um, something that's dedicated, you can take outdoors, or it's just ready to go all the time, I do highly recommend this. Um, you also might want to check out Joko. They make some similar recorders. Um, if you just need a few tracks, um, Tascam also makes some smaller um, track count recorders as well. So if this video was helpful, do please consider joining our channel. And if you have any questions, please let us know as well. Thanks so much for watching, folks, and we'll see you next time.